I'd like to see Mrs. Gilbert. Whom shall I say is calling? Miss Mitchell. Lydia Mitchell. Will you wait in here, please? Excuse me, Miss Gilbert. There's a Miss Mitchell to see you. I'm afraid I don't know the lady. Then it's about time you did. Your husband and I love each other. Well, that's a dramatic entrance if ever I saw one. You must be an actress. I'm serious, Mrs. Gilbert. It's all right, Sammy. Won't you sit down? Of course, if you're more comfortable standing. Larry and I love each other. So you said. Oh, this is Mr. Lawford. How do you do? Oh, never mind him. He's an old friend of the family. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, you're in love with my husband. And he loves me. Well, I can understand that. You're very attractive. Does he intend to make a star of you in the next picture he directs? I'm not joking, Mrs. Gilbert. My dear child, I... <laughs> Don't patronize me. I'm 23. Why, we are sensitive, aren't we? What do you intend doing about Larry and me? What would you suggest? Give him a divorce. Is that what he wants? Yes. And you can tell Larry I won't stand in his way. Mrs. Gilbert, I don't know what you must think of me these last few months. I appreciate the strain you must have been under. Now, if you'd like to go tell Larry the happy news, I'm sure you'll find him at the studio. Thank you for being so understanding. Well, Mr. Lawton, what do you think about that? I think you're the most wonderful woman in the world. And notify casting I'll need 30 dress extras for that nightclub scene. On second thought, make that 35, huh? Oh, and tell Wallace to be sure to... Mr. Gilbert's office. Just a moment. Miss Mitchell. Yes, Lydia? I know you're busy, darling, but I had to call you. I just spoke to your wife, and it's all settled. She said she'd give you a divorce. She said what? She said that she wouldn't stand in our way. Now, let me get this straight. I told her we were in love and wanted to get married. You must be nuts. But, darling, isn't that what you wanted? Where did you get that crazy idea? Do me a favor, huh? Just don't ever bother me again. No, Larry. You can't do this to me. I'll go to the papers. I'll tell them all how you... Larry? Larry? All the crazy dames I ever met. You hear that? I heard enough. She's going to go to the papers. Janie, I give you my word, I didn't see the girl more than five or six times. You don't owe me any explanation, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, don't give me that Mr. Gilbert routine. The girl's insane. I'm at our own location in Tucson. We had, had dinner a couple of times. That's all there was to it. There must have been a little bit more. Lydia? Lydia, you up? It's me, honey. I got great news. I got the part, Lydia. Lydia? Lydia? What are you trying to do, Artie? Lydia! Get her out of here. She's dead. No. No, you're wrong. Lydia. Lydia. Lydia, honey. Operator, give me the police department. This is an emergency. That's where I cut in. A week after Lydia Mitchell was found dead in her apartment, I received a call from her father. Mr. Mitchell was understandably emotional. That's where Arthur found her. Right there. If only I'd come home earlier, maybe I could have stopped them. You could have what? My daughter was murdered, Mr. Marlowe. She was murdered by that, that Lawrence Gilbert. The director? 
He told Lydia he wanted to marry her. That's why she came to Hollywood. Well, then it's your theory that when your daughter kept running after him? My daughter wouldn't run after a married man. She was brought up proper. He let her on. I appreciate your feelings, Mr. Mitchell, but according to these clippings... They're a pack of lies. Does it say there that Lydia had a big cut across the back of her head? No. No. Now, she was hit from behind and then the gas was turned on. Why doesn't it say something there about Mr. Gilbert being here that night? Was he? Yeah. Yeah, I saw him together before I went out. He was screaming at her and he called her all kinds of dirty names. She was going to go to the papers. Did you tell this to the police, Mr. Wells? You know what the cops are like. I should. I was one myself. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that Larry Gilbert's a big shot and she was a... Go ahead, Arthur. Say it. She was a nobody, but she was my daughter. And I'm not going to let her murderer get off scot-free. Will you help me, Mr. Marlowe? I'll see what I can find out. Fifteen minutes later, I was on the freeway headed downtown. I figured a small talk with Lieutenant Harris was indicated. When I walked in, Manny was making like a detective. He almost had me fooled. That's the same shoe, all right. He just had new heels put on. Oh, and speaking of heels, that's the kind of thing that killed Vaudeville. I'd like to talk to you, Manny. See what Cooper has to say. What do you know about this? Well, they got their facts straight. It's the old story, an unvented gas heater. Any chance it was murder? Her father seems to think so. Well, now, from what I know about Pop, I don't think he's a graduate of Scotland Yard. She had a cut in the back of her head. Who says? Artie Wells, the boy who discovered the body. It was a bruise. She hit her head when she fell. Did you talk to Larry Gilbert? Just what are you getting at? According to Wells, Gilbert was in her apartment that night. He's lying. Gilbert hardly knew the girl. And what put you onto him? She kept a diary. And I imagine Mr. Gilbert was mentioned prominently. Now, if we believe one-tenth of the stuff she wrote, this was the greatest romance since Romeo and Juliet. The girl was a high-grade neurotic, Marlowe. I don't know what it is about this town that attracts him. Gilbert was just being nice to her, and she blew it up. And uh, what do you call being nice to her? The right fellow was obviously Larry Gilbert. Ninety minutes later, I drove up to the studio. Getting by the gate man wasn't difficult. My real problem will be getting by Mr. Gilbert's secretary. Would you like to sign your mail now? No, I would not. Just what do you think you're doing? Performing the duties of a secretary. And obviously not to your satisfaction. Now, you listen to me. You've had me on the rack for a week. Ever since that... Oh, Janet, you know how I feel about you. The same way you felt about Lydia Mitchell. What do you want me to say? So I made a mistake. You made a mistake? All right, I made hundreds. I'm a man. Maybe a poor excuse for one, but I never claimed to be anything more. You're the only thing I care for. Please, let me go. Ever since the first day you came into this office. Yes? Uh, Mr. Gilbert? What do you want? Five minutes of your time. My name's Marlowe. I'm a private investigator. I'm busy. Clear out. How well did you know Lydia Mitchell? Why? Her father thinks she was murdered. <laughs> Must run on the family. What? Insanity. I never said more than a dozen words to the girl. I explained all of that to the police. I met her in Tucson while I was shooting a picture. She was starstruck. I told her if she ever got to Hollywood, look me up. And she did? Yeah. I saw her once or twice. Is that a crime? That depends on the last time you saw her. Do you know an actor by the name of Artie Wells? No. Well, he claims he saw you in her apartment the night she died. He's a liar. I was home all evening. Uh, when was the last time you talked to your wife? You should keep in closer touch. That's what I keep telling you. It certainly is a small world. Just fancy running into you here. Just fancy. Oh. Darling. How are you, Janet? Just fine. Where do you know him from? Mr. Marlowe? Oh, we met only an hour ago. He came by the house. For some strange reason, he was curious as to your whereabouts last Tuesday night. 
I told him I didn't really know, because you didn't get home till after three in the morning. Oh, did I say something wrong? Darling, ordinarily I wouldn't mind, but in front of strangers, really. Mr. Marlowe, do forgive him. I'm sure Janet will. Two hours later, I was in the prowl car with Lieutenant Harris. We were on our way to the cemetery where Lydia Mitchell had been buried just one week before. I had convinced the authorities to exhume the body. There were several interested observers. We had brought along Artie Wells to represent the family. I'd have my head examined letting you talk me into this. I tell you, the girl was murdered, Manny. If Larry Gilbert had nothing to hide, why did he lie about seeing her that night? Open it up. Really, Mr. Marlowe, and this is Lieutenant Harris, a police lieutenant. Will you step in there, please? Must have known we were getting close. Suicide? Well, don't you? No. And I bet when the boys from the crime lab get through here, you'll find it was murder. Take a look at that gun. He was a southpaw. Why would he break the habit of a lifetime now? How do you know he was left-handed? I saw him slap his wife. That was Larry Gilbert's last shot. At 7 o'clock in the morning, they removed his body. At 8, they were grilling my client at headquarters. Lieutenant Harris never believed in wasting time. Why don't you make it easy on yourself, Mr. Mitchell? I didn't kill him, Lieutenant. He deserved to die, but I didn't kill him. You felt he was responsible for your daughter's death? He was. That's why Gilbert removed her body, so you couldn't prove she was murdered. That's right. I told you he killed Lydia, but you wouldn't listen. You said it was an accident. Why don't you keep out of this? Does that go for me too, Lieutenant? Well, Mr. Marlowe... Don't worry, Mr. Mitchell. We'll have you out of here in no time. You're an optimist. Use your head, Manny. Whoever killed Gilbert had to know his way around the house. Now, how did he get in there? Through the service entrance. The doors were wide open. And you were there last week. But that Chinese fellow wouldn't let me see him. But you didn't give up, Mr. Mitchell. And last night... No! All right. Why don't you go downstairs with the sergeant? Don't worry, Mr. Mitchell. We'll get you out. Look, you've got absolutely Why no right. Don't you run along, Mr. Wells. What did you find out about this? You can't trace it, can you, Manny? Give us time. Who are you kidding? That thing dates back to the Spanish American War. And you figure that gives your client an out? No. But Mitchell didn't kill him. Then who done it? I don't know. <laughs> can't believe I'm hearing right. All I know is there are a lot of loose ends. Who took Lydia Mitchell's body out of the casket? I thought we agreed it was Larry Gilbert. And what did he do with the body? It makes you stop and think, huh? Really, Mr. Marlowe, I'm afraid I can't tell you any more than I've already told the police. I'll put it right there, will you, Sammy? And that'll be all, thank you. Would you, uh, do the honors? How do you like it? A touch of soda. It's funny you didn't hear the shot. I'm a very sound sleeper. Well, that's a sign of a spotless conscience. I have the feeling you don't approve of me, Mr. Marlowe. Don't let it worry you. I don't approve of myself. Who do you think killed your husband? I thought the police had accorded the honor to Mr. Mitchell. I happen to disagree with him. Oh, but then you're prejudiced. 
Can you think of anyone else who might have a motive? Well, there's always me. Or should I say I? How'd the two of you get along? Frankly, I loathed him. I married him for his money, you know. He was an extremely successful director, and I was a very, very poor actress. And in case you're wondering about the insurance money, he left me approximately... 315,000. <sighs> You've been doing some research. A little. Then isn't it fortunate I did speak frankly? Anything else you'd like to know? Yeah. Like what happened to uh, Lydia Mitchell's body? I don't know. But if I happen to run across it, I'll be sure and call you. Two drinks later, I was ready to hit the road again. I can't say my meeting with Mrs. Gilbert was a big smash, but she had dropped a clue. Larry Gilbert hadn't found love at home. The question was, had he found it with Lydia Mitchell? There was one recognized authority on the subject. Who is it? Marlo. Just a second. The landlady told me I'd find you in here. I, uh, I'm just getting some of Mr. Mitchell's stuff together. You spend much time in here? It isn't very healthy. How long did you know Lydia? Since the first day she arrived in Hollywood. It's all that Larry Gilbert's doings. Sent her some money and a ticket. I know how you feel, Artie. But without him, you'd never have met her. <laughs> never thought of it that way. Who do you think killed him? Probably his wife. They're two of a kind. You're sure he was in this room the night she died? I'm positive. What's the idea? It's a little stuffy. Don't do anything foolish, Artie. Am I intruding? It's all right. I was just cleaning up his desk. How long had you worked for him? Seven years. Seven horrible, lovely years. And you loved him? How could you tell? And then along came Lydia Mitchell. There were a hundred Lydia Mitchells. Well, this one was different. This one threatened to go to the papers. You think that frightened him? Then why did he kill her? Don't be a fool. Would you really like to know where he was the night she died? Yeah. He was with me. Does that surprise you? If you're telling me the truth, I think I know where she is. Just get out of here. Leave me alone. Get out of here. All the screwball ideas. I don't know why I let you lead me around by the nose. You love me, remember? Give me a cigarette. Here he is. Lydia Mitchell's body back in the same grave, we were down at headquarters. We had picked up a passenger on the way. The man I felt made the wheels go round. You certainly remove Lydia's body. You're wrong, I swear. Why would I want to do a thing like that? Because you hated Gilbert and you wanted us to believe he killed her. He did kill her. No, Mr. Wells. Miss Mitchell was not murdered. That was a medical examiner on the phone just now. Her death was accidental, just as we said from the beginning. 
And Larry Gilbert had absolutely nothing to do with it. She was so much in love with him. And she didn't mean a thing to him. Just another girl. And I found her dead in the room that night. You try to frame him. I hid her body in the woods near the cemetery till after he opened the grave. And I put it back. I didn't think he was going to look there again. You expect me to say I'm sorry about Mr. Gilbert. No, no, he deserved everything. She had only looked at me the way she looked at him. Uh, doesn't matter. Important is... Important thing is that... She did like me. She did, you know. See these cufflinks? She gave them to me for my birthday. I guess that does it. Does what? You mean you still don't see who murdered Larry Gilbert? Said it wasn't him. I suppose he's got an alibi. A pip? Larry Gilbert died around 10.30 last night. He's got this report from Cooper a little while ago. Remember where you were at 10.30? driving back from the cemetery. And who was along for the ride? <clears throat> I don't mind me. Just carry on. I'll come back in the morning. Well, I wouldn't think of it. Why didn't Sammy announce you? I came in through the back. I didn't want to bother anybody. Well, how very considerate. I don't believe you've met Mr. Lockwood. <clears throat> No, I don't think I have. How are you? Fine, thank you. You probably consider this in rather poor taste. Why? Well, I am supposed to be in mourning. Oh, I'd be a hypocrite. You told me you hated your husband. If nothing else, I am honest. But not completely. You didn't tell me about Lawford here. Now, see here, Marlowe. You've got a fine girl, Lawford. Rich, too. You know how much insurance her husband left? I have no idea. Sure you do. Didn't you go to the Trans World Insurance Company this afternoon and try to pass off as Mrs. Gilbert's representative? Or didn't you know? No. If you're quite through, not nearly. <laughs> that was very impressive. Thanks. What do you think of him as our killer? Oh, I'm afraid I don't see it. Neither do I. And that puts it squarely up to you. I beg your pardon. You killed your husband. Oh, Mr. Marlowe, please. You knew the police would catch on fast enough that he didn't commit suicide. That's why you put the gun in his right hand. You, of all people, knew he was left-handed. But you made one mistake. You forgot to prepare an alibi for yourself. Well, I told you I was in bed at 9 o'clock asleep. Then you should have heard the gunshot. I thought the police established the shot was at 10.30. How would you know? It was just established 20 minutes ago while I was at headquarters. I guess I goofed. I guess you did. Do you think we could drop him off downtown? I'd hate to have Sammy find him here. Hmm. Should we take my car or yours? Let's take mine. I don't think you'll be coming back. a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with California National Productions.